Uh, today we are going to uh, discuss uh, lungs and uh, bronchopulmonary segments. Uh, basically, uh, when you look at the thorax, there are uh, cavities in the thorax. There are two uh, lateral cavities, which are known as pulmonary cavities, and there is a this is the anterior aspect. Two lateral cavities, pulmonary cavities, and a central cavity which is mediastinal cavities. The lateral cavity is con contains the lungs, and the mediastinal cavity contains everything else, including the heart, uh, great vessels, uh, trachea, esophagus, thymus, uh, lymphatics, uh, and nerves and vessels. Now. Uh, today's uh, lecture would be mainly, mainly fo focused on bronchopulmonary segments. There are two lungs, right and left. The right lung has got three lobes and the left lung has got two lobes. The three lobes of the right lung are because of the two fissures in the right lung. One fissure is uh, uh, you can see this fissure. This is an oblique fissure going from the anterior side, going laterally, going medially, and going right up to the right high up, up to the posterior part of the lung. This is the oblique fissure. This oblique fissure starts at the spine of the T2 vertebra and then it follows the posterior part, lateral part and ends at the, almost at the sixth rib. So this oblique fissure uh, divides the lung into upper and lower lobe. The upper lobe is again divided, the upper lobe, uh, there, is a, there is an additional fissure and this is horizontal fissure. This horizontal fissure starts at the fourth intercostal space, runs uh, almost transversely uh, you can say transverse fissure and meets the oblique fissure somewhere at uh, L uh, at the rib 5. So this is the uh, horizontal transverse fissure and this is oblique fissure. Uh, below the oblique fissure is the lower lobe. Above the oblique fissures are the upper lobe and the middle lobe. The upper lobe is about the horizontal fissure. And the middle lobe, this is this is the middle lobe. The middle lobe is below the horizontal uh, or transverse fissure. Now the upper lobe consists of three segments. Uh, these are bronchopulmonary segments. Uh, the upper lobe, this is the apex of the lung, most highest, highest part of the lung, apex, and this goes above the clavicle, almost uh, encroaches the uh, cervical uh, neck, so neck of the uh, above the clavicle in process, and this is the inferior part, which is uh, resting on the dome of the diaphragm. Now, the this is upper lobe of the right lung. The upper lobe consists of three segments. One is this apical segment, right at the top. This is apical segment. I, I'm going to take this out. This is the anterior segments of the upper lobe, lying anteriorly, and this is the posterior segments of the upper lobe. And you can see the main, this is the trachea, this is the right main bronchus, and this is the upper lobe. The upper lobe gives rise to uh, three segments, a pical segment, anterior segment and the posterior segment. So each bronco seg bronchopulmonary segment has its own bronchus. It has also its own blood vessels, pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins. So each one of them is independent. Now we come to the middle lobe. Middle lobe of the right lung. The middle lobe of the right lung, this is the middle lobe of the right lung. These two are the middle lobe of the right lung. This is medial side uh, and this is lateral. So this is medial 
मिडल लोब एंड दिस इज लेटरल मिडल लोब एंड यू कैन सी दिस इज द मिडल ब्रॉन्कस दैट वॉज द अपर ब्रॉन्कस दिस इज द मिडल ब्रॉन्कस डिवाइडिंग इन टू अ मीडियल सेगमेंट एंड अ लेटरल सेगमेंट सो दिस इज मिडल लोब एंड दिस लोब दिस ब्रॉन्कस कंटिन्यूज लोअर डाउन is the lower lobe this is the whole lobe is the lower lobe this is the lower lobe the lower lobe again has got an apical segment this is which is lying posterior almost the whole of the lower lobe uh, lies in the posterior wall of the thorax a uh, very small part of the anterior lobe is in the posterior in the posterior part of the thorax most of the anterior lobe and the middle lobe is in front anterior now we discuss the lower lobe the lower lobe has got an apical segment this is a apical segment of the lower lobe and you can see the apical segment going over here then it has got a middle segment this is the middle segment of the lower lobe this is the anterior segment of the lower lobe let me take it out uh, this is the middle segment and this is the anterior segment this is the lateral and posterior segment so these are the uh, that's the lateral and that's the posterior segment the medial uh, Uh, medial segment is almost lying medial and then you got uh, anterior lateral posterior segments over here so that is the lower bronchus dividing into five so all together there are tens bronchopulmonary segments three in the upper two in the middle and five in the lower so there are 10 bronchopulmonary segments each bronchopulmonary segment has its own blood supply has its own bronchus has its own uh, venous system has its own lymphatics so each one is independent each bronchopulmonary segment is independent and this is useful in uh, pathology when one segment of the lung is involved you just remove that segment and leave behind the rest normal segments so that is segment tem segment tectomy instead of doing a lobectomy or a pneumonectomy lobectomy is removing a one lobe and pneumonectomy is removing the whole of the lung so instead of uh, removing a uh, whole lung or a lobe you remove the segment which is involved in pathology for instance if there is a bronchiectasis involving the lower uh, apical lobe you remove the lower apical lobe and get rid of bronchiectasis if the rest of the bronchus is normal we leave them behind so that is the uh, right lobe uh, right lung having three lobes upper middle and lower and the right this is the trachea the right bronchus is much more wider than the left i want um, i'll be able to show you the left when i remove the left lung and any foreign body uh, which is inhaled is more likely to go and uh, get lodge in the right bronchus rather than the left because the right bronchus is more wider now we come to the left lung the left lung has got only two lobes upper and lower the fissure is the same one this is the oblique fissure running running from behind at the t2 spine following posteriorly following laterally following anteriorly and going up to the sixth rib so that is the oblique fissure there is no horizontal uh, fissure over here and this divides the lung into upper and lower the upper lobe again has got an apical segment this is the apical segment it has got an anterior segment and it has got a posterior segment these are the uh, upper lobes in addition to these three segments 
The upper lobe has also got lingular segments. Lingula is like tongue. It has got these two segments, superior and inferior lingular segments. This replaces the middle lobe. There is no middle lobe because of the uh, encroachment of the uh, heart on the left side. This is known as cardiac notch. Cardiac notch is reflection of the pleura from the sternum towards the left side. And this part of the heart is known as bare area of the heart. It is devoid of pleura. Pleura gets reflected from here. Uh, this is the mediastinal pleura and then it gets reflected on the coastal surface. So that is the cardiac notch. Alright, now let's take the lobes out one by one. Apical lobe, I'm going to remove apical lobe and the posterior one. You can see it over here. This is the upper bronchus. I have removed the apical and the posterior. And this is anterior. And the upper bronchus also gives rise to a lingular bronchus. This is lingular. This is superior lingular and that's the inferior lingular. Superior and inferior lingular. So this is the whole of the this is the left main bronchus and this is the upper lobe bronchus having the three segments uh, and the two lingular segments. So these are the five ones. Alright. So that's the upper lobe. Again, uh, upper lobe is mainly uh, anterior. Very small part of the upper lobe is posterior. Now we come to the lower lobe. The lower lobe of the lower lobe of the left side. The lower lobe of the left side has got an apical segment. This is apical segment. That's the apical segment. Now, because of the heart, there is no medial segment here. Because of the encroachment of the heart on the left side, the medial segment is absent. So you got an anterior segment. This is an anterior segment. This is the lateral segment. And this is posterior segment. So that is the lower lobe bronchus, which has got an apical, anterior, lateral, and posterior. There is no mid medial basal segment. All these uh, lower lobe segments are also known as uh, basal segments: apical, basical, lateral, basical, posterior basal, uh, anterior basal because they are on the uh, lower lobes, they are known as basal segments. So that is uh, the bronchopulmonary segments. Here on the left side, the bronchopulmonary segment which is absent is the middle uh, uh, segment because of the presence of the heart. Now this is the trachea. Trachea starts at the cricoid cartilage, just at the lower end of the larynx and it runs lower down up to the up, up to its bifurcation uh, from up to T4 or at the angle of Louis. It bifurcates at the angle of the Louis into a right main bronchus and the left main bronchus. Now this inner edge of the bifurcation is known as carina. This is a very sharp edge, inner edge, the carina. And this is very much appreciated when you are doing bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy is passing a scope inside the trachea and looking at the inside of the trachea and bronchus. So this angle is very prominent when you do a bronchoscopy. Now this uh, angle also contains lymph nodes, tracheobronchial, tracheobronchial lymph nodes. Uh, a large amount of lymph nodes are present over here, which are draining the mediastinum which are draining the heart, which are draining the pleura. And if these uh, nodes are enlarged, then this angle becomes uh, widened. And this you can appreciate it when you do a bronchoscopy. In cases of carcinoma, if there are secondaries in the tracheobronchial nodes, this may become enlarged. And they may be taken for biopsy when you are doing mediastinoscopy. So that's the trachea. The trachea has got uh, incomplete uh, cartilage rings anteriorly. Posteriorly, the cartilage rings are deficit 
and replaced by muscles. All right, so that is the trachea. This is the main bronchus, that is right bronchus. And um, we come to the great vessels, mediastinum. We'll cover in the next lecture, but just to briefly tell you about the uh, upper part of the mediastinum. This is the aorta. Upper part, this is the arch of the aorta. And this is the descending aorta. This is the descending aorta. And it gives branches. It gives a brachiocephalic on the right side, which divides into right subclavian and right uh, common carotid. On the left side, it gives left common carotid and left subclavian. So that is the aorta. And this is the pulmonary trunk. This one is pulmonary trunk going towards the uh, pulmonary lungs. Uh, 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 and these are the pulmonary veins over here. Pulmonary veins, four pulmonary veins, two over here and two behind. And then you got the trachea and behind the trachea is esophagus. Esophagus is over here. And look how esophagus goes in front of the aorta as it enters the diaphragm. The aorta uh, is behind it. Uh, it's on the lateral side and posterior to trachea esophagus in initially. Then as it travels towards the lower part of the thorax, it becomes anterior and uh, penetrates the diaphragm at uh, T10 and aorta goes up to T12. So these are the structures which are running. When you are approaching the, uh, the esophagus, the better approach is from the right thoracotomy, fifth intercostal space. And when you are approaching the aorta, the better approach is from the left thoracotomy, fifth intercostal space again. So this is a brief introduction of the pulmonary segment. Thank you.